Drop down dew from above, you heavens, and let the crowds rain down the just one. Let the earth be open and bring forth a Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy, communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. For forth we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. From the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord, had give, <clears throat> the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, You should build me a house to dwell in. It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you, and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Amen. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, My kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. Forever I will confirm your prosperity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing the 
goodness of the Lord. He shall say to me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him and my covenant with him stands firm. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to my gospel, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ. Be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible.
for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. So in the first reading, David wants to build a house for God. And of course, today's gospel reading that we also heard on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception is, this, is the passage of the Annunciation. When we talk about a house, what do we mean? And is not Mary the original house of the Lord? A house provides shelter and protection. It shields us from storms. It keeps us dry. Well, we hope so if, if the roof's okay. It protects us from the extremes of hot and cold, and it's a place where we hopefully feel safe from outside threats. Did not Mary protect the baby Jesus in her womb? Was Mary not a place of safety for Jesus? Now, how should also be a home, a place where families come together and develop those special relationships that really last forever? It's a place where traditions are handed down a place where children learn what it is like to be a man or a woman, and a place where they see how marriages work. And Mary provided Jesus with a home, a place of comfort, both before and after his birth. She shared her human experience with him, and in the Holy Family she provided an example to all of us of how marriages and families should work. A house obscures the outside or the inside from the outside in both good ways and in bad. It is good that our every living moment is not on full and constant public display. Especially for children, a house is a place where they can live and learn and make mistakes without all of that being known by everyone and being subject to constant public scrutiny. You know, in some ways we have to be careful about posting videos of our children's funniest moments because if we're not careful to make sure that those embarrassing moments live on forever, and that's not supposed to happen. Children need to trust that they can take risks and live a life inside the home that won't be public, made public to everyone outside of the home. Now, of course, unfortunately, a house also shields bad behavior from outside scrutiny. In some houses, horrible things happen behind, behind closed doors and Children endure some, endure some abominable things that scar them forever. Of course, those things should never, ever, ever happen. Mary herself provided the house that obscured the inside from the outside. Inside of her, and known to her but not to the world, was the Savior of the world. And during Jesus' childhood, Mary made the house of the Holy Family into a place where the Savior could grow to physical maturity in relative obscurity. Starting his public ministry, ministry only when the time came that had been determined by the Father. The house is the place of the domestic church. It is a place where parents fulfill the responsibility that they promise to fulfill at their child's baptism, to be the primary educators in the faith for that child. Others, of course, can help with that education or perhaps more properly with that formation. But it is fundamentally the parent's responsibility. And again, they make that promise to fulfill it at their child's baptism. We often refer to a church as a house of God. And of course, the temple was the place where God could be found in, in, in the Jewish ancient times because it housed the Ark of the Covenant with the Ten Commandments located inside, and that was located in the Holy of Holies of the Temple, the most sacred part of the Jewish Temple. Today we have a, we have a tabernacle that houses Jesus instead of an Ark of the Covenant, and we have a sanctuary that's physically distinct from the rest of the Church. Yeah, this is our Holy of Holies, and we treat the sanctuary 
with a special reverence. The Ten Commandments represent the Old Covenant, a covenant based on the law. The New Covenant is one of love based on the Holy Spirit. And who is at the heart of this covenant? Jesus Christ. And the Ark of the New Covenant? Well, it was Mary because she carried that New Covenant inside of her. Of course, we go to a house to find those who live here there, to find the residents of that house. And we come to church to find God. But we can also go to Mary to find Jesus. To Jesus through Mary, as Pope John Paul II and St. Louis de Montfort used to say. As we prepare for Christ's coming this Advent, may we go to find our Savior by going to his first human house, to the Blessed Mother, to Jesus through Mary. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. If nothing is impossible to God, with confidence we can make our prayers for this world through the powerful intercession of Mary, model of faith and hope. For the pastors and the people of the universal community of faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations where atheistic and secularistic ideologies restrict religious freedom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people overwhelmed with problems who no longer believe that the good news can be for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of perfect trust in God, like the Virgin of Nazareth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For women who are pregnant, alone and afraid in this difficult time, may they welcome the life within them and draw strength from the angel Gabriel's words to Mary, do not fear. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are lonely and depressed at this time of year, that they find hope and loving fellowship in the Epiphany Parish community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have suffered from the COVID-19, 
May they find rest and strength to heal. May their spirit lift any burdens that afflict them. May their hearts find peace and the path that God has called them to follow. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the departed who await the reign of Christ that will have no end, especially Nora Dotson, for whom this math is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, as Christmas draws near, we bring these prayers before you, assisted by Blessed Mary of a Virgin, your faithful handmaid, the mother of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the laws of the church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him. 
with love beyond all telling, John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, He took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Philippe, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name will be called Emmanuel.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a couple of, uh, just a few announcements here this morning. Um, once again, we're offering the opportunity to have beautiful Christmas points set as placed near the altar in honor or memory of your loved ones. The suggested donation is $12 per plant. Please consider honoring a loved one with a poinsettia and help Epiphany Church to have the look of Christ's splendor this Christmas season. Um, please see your bulletin or call the office for more information. Um, Christmas Mass schedule. Uh, so the, uh, Christmas Eve, there's a vigil at 5 o'clock. Um, what time is midnight Mass, you might ask? Well, at this parish, it is actually, unlike others, it is actually at midnight. And it will be um, somewhat bilingual. Um, Christmas morning, we will have a Mass at 10.30 a.m. Uh, starting December 26th, we're going to actually stop the live streaming uh, of the daily Mass. And we're going to live stream just the Saturday Vigil and the Sunday Spanish Masses going forward. Um, but we are looking, for those that are unable to make it to Mass, we're looking for additional ways to try to serve them as we go forward. And we'll be talking... Um, and looking for some of those solutions as, as, as we move forward. Um, I wanted to thank Carrie for the music this morning. I wanted to thank all of you for your patience during this very, very strange uh, year of 2020 um, where we have been uh, having to wear masks, where we've had to socially distance, and where we've also had to discourage assembly, uh, singing by the people, which is completely contrary to everything I've ever taught, completely contrary to what Vatican II said, I dislike it very much. Um, that would be an understatement, actually. Um, but that's the, that's the year that we live in. So as we approach uh, Christmas Masses, um, you're going to hear more. We're gonna hear, you're going to hear music. You're going to hear things that you recognize. I hate to say this, but just sit and listen. I hate to say that, but just listen to it. Uh, we're going to continue to discourage some the singing by the people. Um, using as we have been both the, not just the, the, the guidelines from the diocese but also um, the guidelines that the Thomistic Institute that the Dominicans in Washington DC put out um, and that were recommended by Archbishop Blair of the USCCB Committee on Divine Worship and it's there that you find the instruction that, that we should discourage singing by the people in, during this time of pandemic so I appreciate your patience with that I know you don't like it I don't like it even more but we'll get through this together and very soon we will be able to sing fully and completely and we'll look forward and pray for that day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith and joyful in hope and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.